with the new iOS beta for a few weeks now, and while things like haptic feedback in the keyboard and the ability to pull images out of the backgrounds is cool, the thing people are asking me about the most is the new lock screen. With a simple tap and hold on the familiar screen, you can make it unfamiliar-ish. The first thing to do is swipe over and tap on the blue plus icon to start with a new wallpaper. Generally, I do photo-based versions for myself, but you can also choose from Apple's pictures, make an emoji collage, a simple color, or even choose a unique wallpaper that adapts to the weather. That one's pretty cool. One mode that I did miss on my first run through though in the photo version is a photo shuffle, which does as the name suggests and lets you choose an album or an assortment of photos to change on your wallpaper throughout the day. If your photo has a bit of depth to it naturally, you can even tuck the clock behind it, behind people, trees, towers, whatever. It's very cool. And at first I thought you needed to use a photo with iOS's portrait mode involved, but it works with any photo that has a background and a foreground that can kind of be determined by, I'm guessing, AI. This picture here was even taken on a film camera, so no data at all. You can also add widgets, but that does disable the depth effect, sadly. Hopefully, this is something Apple can remedy soon since the effect is pleasing to use. You can also choose between six different fonts. It's a nice starting place for now, and you can change the color on them infinitely. I was expecting Apple to cut corners in the color picker like a lot of other companies, but no. In true Steve Jobs fashion, you can choose literally any color in the world for your fonts and your widgets. Overall, it reminds me of the Apple Watch's customizations, which is a great place to draw inspiration from. Hopefully Apple will pad out the iOS lock screen with even more options in the future updates. And I'm excited to see where it goes. This new lock screen combined with the updates that added custom widgets and icons in iOS 15 has really opened up iOS to a lot of personalization and I love it. Functionally, the lock screen works the same in iOS 16, but the now playing controls and notifications pin at the bottom of the screen instead of being in the middle. This makes them a little easier to access with one hand, which is nice. And oh, you can jump right into system search from the lock screen too. Not a huge plus, but it's a subtle efficiency gain and you guys know that I'm here for that. That being said, the new search button on the home screen is a little more in your face than I would have liked. Maybe this will prompt people to use it more, but to me, it's weird, and pulling down to enable system search is really not that hard. Now, the new button even changes the search animation, making it pop up from the bottom of the screen instead of being pulled down from the top. Notifications are changing slightly in iOS 16 as well, but the biggest changes rely on developers making functional changes to their apps, so I haven't stumbled across many in my time with the new operating system. Once they appear, they'll keep you updated with a notification that refreshes instead of needing to resend you a notification for everything. Think about an Uber Eats order being one notification that's changing constantly instead of six different notifications coming through all the time telling you all the updates of your order. Other than that, they look a little different this year with bolder text and some more iconography depending on if the developers have updated or not. Possibly the sleeper hit of iOS 16 is the ability to make anything a PNG. I mean, look at this. I literally have this now and it took me less than 10 seconds to make it. And while the background isolation doesn't kill it every time, it rocks it more than not. And I am a huge fan of this feature. Honestly, hilarious. Being able to make memes out of anything is... It feels like a superpower. It's the best, I don't know, underrated, like I said, let's move on. Something I've found myself testing a lot is the new dictation features, and I really enjoy them. Apple now adds punctuation to your dictation automatically, and you can use the keyboard at the same time. It takes some getting used to talking and typing at the same time, but in terms of accessibility and efficiency gains, this is a huge step up. Also in the accessibility category, Apple is adding live captions, at least in beta. So you can turn it on in the accessibility menu and you can just see captions for whatever's playing on the screen, whether it be music, videos, or even FaceTimes. Although that FaceTime is an extra toggle in the settings, so make sure to turn that one on too. The coolest update of them all though is the new CarPlay interface, but there won't be any cars that support it until late 2023. So there's really nothing for me to test here. That said, I'm very excited and regular CarPlay, you can now go into the settings on your phone and disable Siri needing to confirm your messages. So just offers a bit more of a seamless texting experience from your car with your voice. I would only turn this on if you already think that Siri does a pretty good job at understanding you. If you do need those checks, obviously don't turn it on. 
And while you're in the settings, it's also worth hopping into the sound slash haptic menu as well to turn on the keyboard feedback. I know vibrating feedback on each key press might not be for everyone, but on a phone with good haptics like pretty much every single iPhone, I think the subtle vibrations are really nice, so I'm happy, very happy to see Apple finally adding it. There's some iMessage changes as well, and they're pretty welcome this year. You can now edit messages on the fly when you make a mistake, and you can actually delete those messages or undo send if you want. But both of those things will only work for the first 15 minutes after you send it, so kind of have to make your corrections within then, or it'll just be like a regular message. Another update to messages incorporates SharePlay, which is Apple's technology from last year that allowed you to watch movies together through FaceTime. Now, if you don't want to do it while talking and looking at someone else, you can do it through messages. Pretty similar, but uh, a nice innovation on SharePlay nonetheless. One update I'm really fond of and might actually pull me away from Google Keep Notes is Apple's new Quick Note feature on iOS. Previously a Mac and iPad exclusive, Apple has now made it so anytime you click on the share button in an app, there's an option to pop open a note. It's subtle, but highly functional, and I seriously live for this type of stuff. So the faster I can get into my notes, the better. Speaking of notes, I'll talk about Apple's update notes, and tucked near the bottom of it was Apple has shared that foreground blur in portrait mode is being updated to look more realistic with better drop off, which is cool to see, although not noticeable in every picture. Apparently cinematic mode is getting better too, and especially better at cutting up people who are positioned profile angle and in video. It's also slated to work better with wild hair and glasses, but for now I would still recommend that everybody turns it down to like f6 or less to just get a more realistic blur through the fake blur effect. Okay, don't click off, there's still some cool stuff here, but I'm gonna try to keep it as brief as possible. If you think there's anything I missed, hit me up in the comments below, I really do wanna talk about it. Apple's smart home app is updated, and now it has a home screen that's a bit more organized and functional, but overall, I still find the app really confusing, and it takes a lot of playing around with to finally figure it out. It almost feels like one of the harder apps, like Apple's health app, which is also very confusing. In the weather app, there's more weather data if you tap and hold on each section, which is pretty cool. In the notes app, there's lots of changes, but the best one is you can lock a note behind a passcode. So if you have any passwords and notes, you can lock those up. Also in not in notes, but there are more Mumoji customizations, specifically more hair, more noses, more headwear, and more lip colors to be more natural apparently. One of the cooler ones that I might spend a little too much time talking about is handoff for FaceTime. So you could be walking outside, taking a FaceTime call, come in and just tap it onto your Mac or an iPad to instantly move from one device to the other. Very, very cool stuff. In the Apple Books app, there's more reading themes, which I really like, but that might not be for everyone. Um, the fitness app is now coming to all iPhones. I don't know if you want to log all your fitness app stuff in Apple's fitness app if you don't use an Apple Watch to gather that data automatically, but now you can. And Apple also implemented a new passkey function that's even safer to sign into things online. You'll need to live pretty deep in the Apple ecosystem to get the most out of this, but if you do, it's a pretty cool way to be even more secure online. In the Photos app, there are lots of changes like the ability to copy and paste edits and a few other things, but one of the cooler things, or at least one of the more uh, forward-thinking updates is called iCloud Photo Libraries. And that basically allows you to detect when other people with iPhones are around you shooting, and then Apple will seamlessly be like, hey, these are your friends around you. Do you guys wanna build a library together and just all the photos you take in this location will be shared directly to that library. There's a few other systems where it will kind of build libraries like that and you can set time limits on it and if one person makes an edit, everyone will be able to see it. And I don't know, Apple's kind of hyped that part up a lot, but I've left it till the end because I don't know if in practice people are gonna use it as much as Apple thinks they will. If it very seamlessly goes together, that's cool, but in my experience, people take their photos, edit the ones they like and share those. I don't wanna share every single photo I take with every single person I'm with all the time. That seems like a bit of overkill to me. And that's about all I want to talk about right now. Obviously, there are a ton more small updates, and I've linked the Apple update page below for anyone else looking to get into sort of the nitty gritty of it. But if you want more video from us, check out my MacBook Air review or my hands on with the Cadillac Lyric in Utah. I love you all, and I will see you guys next time. What's up? It's Brad from the editing desk, and I just wanted to pop in to say one last negative, and that's about iPad OS 16, because as much as there are cool features like Stage Manager on the M1 iPads and whatnot, you can't customize the lock screen here, and that sucks. I wish you could.